Hi everyone, welcome to Ex Figura. My name is George. I am the founder of Ex Figura. We're so excited to see so much attention from practices across architecture and design globally as well as universities dive into this platform. I'm going to take the next few minutes to give you a glimpse of how to log in, how to set up a project, and how to use the interface. So you can see us in a nutshell as a single centralized platform with access to all of the best models. There are 40 now models to date across text, image, video, and 3D. You can import your own geometries, you can import your own images, 3D models. We have a speckle integration, a Rhino plugin, and lots more coming soon. So to dive in, uh, you can use the get started button right here. You can click on the top right. You can access with Google, Microsoft, any email really. Once you do get started, click on here, you'll have access to all of your projects. Now these are projects which you can share with others, with other students, with clients, with other architects or designers. You can make these view only or edit only as well. You have also access to all of your past generations. You have access to images, there's a few filters. You can train your own models. Well, I'll show you how to use this on the interface as well. So we're gonna get started by creating a new project. I'm gonna call it X Figura, hello world. And you can click into that and have access into the central canvas. So I'm gonna click on one of the templates right here. You don't have to use these templates, uh, but this gives you a glimpse into this node structure we are going to be working with. Now you can see, see these single nodes as a single platform, but that gives you access to all of the best models in one place. Now, I'm gonna start, move up and start from scratch. Now, the very first step is learning how to use the interface. Now, on the far left, you can access these nodes or these tools by clicking on this X on the left. That gives you access to text, image, video, 3D models, in painting, upscaling. Another way of accessing this is by double clicking on the canvas. And I'm gonna start us off by generating an image node right here. Now each node is identical. It's intended to be accessible uh, by non-technical people, but also give you all the parameters if you're more technical users, and give you a more varied model choice as well. Now to get started, all you need to do is type in a prompt. We can say a mid-rise tower in and as our default model, you can see we're using Nano Banana. This is all built on a credit-based system. For enterprise users, we have access to a credit pool where all the members in that enterprise can access uh, all of these credits. Uh, this is, the Nano is worth one credit, and you can see your credit system, the credits you have available on the bottom left. So we have our image, image generated, we can generate a new image by clicking generate again. You can access your board history by clicking right here or all of your history by clicking on the button right next to it. You can pull this out so you can access all of your past images. Now, what we can do with this single node is use the same node but actually change the model. Now, as a best practice, it always helps to see right here it says, new or best, this is our way of indicating these are uh, validated models, we've validated them all of course, however, it's a good place to start. Now you can add more images, you can go back to your text prompt here or click on input and you can enlarge that image and see all of your settings and actually download that image right here. So. What we can now do, that now that we have the single image, we understand how this first node work, is that we can create our whole workflow. It can be very personalized, and you can choose how to then navigate across image, video, you can customize this in any way. So you can see I clicked, I hovered over this button right here, I clicked on it, and that generated the new node. 
Another way of doing it is simply clicking on the X or double clicking again and you can generate the new node and you can see the logic is always going from the left as an input to the right as an output. And with this you can connect blue on blue and you can always hover and see what type of inputs go into what. So it's intended to be as simple to use as possible. Here we can edit the scene. We're using again this nano banana model. You can also try out C Dream, Flux Context, or SDXL, Magnific Mystic is great for style transfers. However, you can see by generating new nodes how each one compares. And we also have a lot of documentation right here. We have this YouTube channel, so we'll be publishing a lot more information here as well. So what we can do is say, change this input image to show a night, let's say, a vibrant night scene. So that's how easy, that's how easy it is to generate uh, or edit a single image. So I might want to make another variation. I might change the model and I might use that same prompt from here. I'll simply paste it in and now we can compare. Okay, this is what I got with Nano. We can enlarge it. And if you click on this button right here, you can actually see this is the before and this is the after. Now, this is how powerful these models are. You have that full coherence of that input image, the geometry, the structure is all there, but it's really respected that prompt into changing it into a night scene. So you have a lot of options in keeping control. Now you can also change the cladding, change the typology. You can really have fun in editing these scenes. Now you can see C Dream took the vibrant part of the prompt much more literally. It's kept that coherence, the aspect ratio is there, but it took the vibrant to be more colorful, neon uh, as, as an aesthetic. So we have two images we've branched from our input. What I can then do is create a video from here. I can then do transitions and have two inputs, first frame, last frame. I can swap these. I have all the parameters always on the right hand side. You can see we're now using the Kling AI model for 10 credits for five seconds with the multi model right here. And you can obviously change that. C Dream, C Dance has seen a lot of attention with the Pro model, and you also have access to uh, multiple inputs depending on what model you use. You also have access to 3D models. You have access to upscaling these images for upscaling. I would always advise to go to Magnific, which is very much one of the industry standards, I would say, for upscaling. So you have a lot of versatility then to in paint, change these images and keep full control over your whole workflow. Now I will point out some other uh, aspects about the interface before you get started. You can change the display. I, I love to work in night mode, uh, in dark mode actually, and you can change it right here on the bottom right. You can zoom in, zoom out. You can create a workflow, right click, save as template, and we'll get deeper into this into in different into in the next videos. But you can then uh, copy an ID and actually share this template with other users. Now a brief glimpse into some other workflows before I pass it on to the next video is access to all the template, the, all the canvas features. So adding shapes, adding text, you can actually also add comments for other users and you can share these projects, share these boards. If you did want to give users a full benefit or import your own geometry, you can simply drag and drop onto the canvas. You can use this node right here to upload your images, your 3D models, you can train LoRa models, do text to parametric models, upload your 3D geometry with Speckle. There's a lot more coming up. Uh, stay tuned for the next videos. Happy to have you here and thanks for listening. Bye.